Hello and welcome to where we will be discussing two more exponent rules and also discussing how this can apply to the real world uh, when we talk about big, really big numbers or really, 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 really small numbers uh, using scientific notation. So uh, I've gone ahead and pasted up the, la the five rules we learned. Remember there's the zero law, the one law, the product rule, the quotient rule, and then also the negative exponent rule. We want to go ahead and talk about two more rules um, that will be uh, important in our learning of exponents. The first one is called the power rule. Power rule. And the power rule states that whenever you have values, uh, say uh, a to the m power, and we raise that to the n. So in other words, when we have a power raised to a power, then we multiply the exponents together. Uh, so remember, when we did when we had product rule, we were multiplying two powers together. We added the exponents. Here, in the quotient rule, when we were dividing powers, we subtracted the exponents. If I have a power raised to a power, then we multiply. Uh, for example, let's go ahead and say I had x to the seventh raised to the third power. To do this problem, we're going to apply the power rule, which states that when you have a power raised to a power, you multiply. So we would get x to the 7 times 3 power. We would multiply those out to get our answer of x to the 21. OK, so now it's your turn to uh, give these three problems a try, applying the power rule. Here we have 2 to the 7th raised to the 9th power. Then for number two, we have x to the fourth raised to the eleventh. And here we have, for number three, x to the fifth raised to the negative two power. Go ahead and pause the video, take out your video notebook, and give these three problems a try. Press the play button when you're ready to resume. OK, how'd you do? Uh, so uh, here we're going to apply the power rule. We have a power, two to the seventh, all raised to another power, which is to the ninth power. So to do this problem, we will have 2 raised to the 7th times 9. Remember, power to a power, you multiply. Uh, 7 times 9 is 63. So our final answer is 2 to the 63rd power. We're just going to go ahead and leave it just like that. That's good enough. On this uh, question number 2, we have x to the 4th raised to the 11th. So we multiply the powers. And our final answer then is x to the 44 for that one. And for question number 3, Again, we're going to apply the same thing, power rule, x to the fifth raised to the negative 2. So we multiply the powers. We're left, left with x to the negative 10. However, this is not our final answer. Remember, in the last section, we talked about how negative exponents, if you have negative exponents in your answer, that's, that's a kind of a math sin. Although now that I think about it, it's more like a transgression, not really a sin, transgression. OK, doesn't matter. Um, x to the 10th, we need to apply the elevator rule. Ding! These come down, switching to the opposite location in the fraction. Final answer for that one should have been 1 over x to the 10th. If you did not simplify, please write that somewhere in your notes. You've got to simplify. You cannot have negative exponents. So the second uh, rule or law that we're learning is just, it's, it's actually the same as the power rule. In fact, I worry calling it a different thing because some people will be like, ah, I don't know which one to apply. Uh, but really, it's the same rule. It's called the multiple power rule, I like to call it, um, which basically states that when, whatever values are inside, um, let's say that I have um, uh, an a and a b, and we raise it to some power n. This power rule basically states that, hey, you're going to distribute the power to all the values inside the parentheses. It doesn't matter how many there are. Basically, you would distribute those powers to everything inside. Let me give you an example. For example, let's say I had um, x cubed, uh, y squared, and I raised this to the fifth power. So basically, we need to raise everything inside the parentheses to the fifth power. So uh, we would do that by applying the power rule. We know that when we have a power raised to a power, we multiply. So I have x raised to the 3 times 5 times y raised to the 2 times 5. This comes out to be 15, x to the 15th. And this comes out to be y to the 10th. 
This also works if there's just normal numbers inside. Take a look. If I had 2x to the 7th and I raise this to the 3rd power, again, we need to raise everything inside to the 3rd power. So the 2 gets raised to the 3rd power, the x to the 7th gets raised to the 3rd power, and remember that when we have a power already, we multiply the powers. So 2 to the 3rd power, that's 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8 x to the 21st power. So again, this is just the power rule. Just remember that if you have a bunch of stuff inside a parenthesis, um, and it's just one term, meaning there's no addition or subtraction, then everything needs to get raised to that power. Okay, so let's have you guys try the multiple power rule here. I've given you uh, three problems here. The first one is 3x cubed, in parentheses, squared. And then number five I gave you is uh, parentheses x cubed times y to the negative two, close parentheses, to the fifth power. And then in number four here we have uh, parentheses x squared over y to the fifth, close parentheses squared. Go ahead and pause the video, give these a try, apply the multiple power rule by raising everything inside the parentheses to those powers. And then you can check your answers by pushing the play button. Good luck! Okay, let's take a look. So here we go. We've got, uh, we're going to go ahead and raise everything inside to the second power. So we get 3 squared times x cubed squared. Remember, when it's a power raised to a power, you multiply. So 9 squared is, I'm sorry, 3 squared is 9. And here we get x to the sixth. That's our answer for number one. On the next one, we're going to raise everything to the fifth power. We've got powers raised to a power, so we multiply those powers. We're going to get x times 3 to the fifth, y times negative 2 to the fifth times 5. So we get x to the 15th, y to the negative 10. Is this our answer? Yeah, we don't really want to do that. Uh, don't leave negative uh, exponents in your answers. We should go ahead and elevator rule the y down, so we get x to the 15th over y to the 10th. Again, we move those powers down, they become positive. Here, we're just going to raise all the powers to the second power. So I get x squared times 2, and y to the 5th times 2. Final answer there is y to the, f sorry, x to the 4th over y to the 10th. So that's how you apply the multiple power rule. Okay, I decided to pull out uh, just three more problems uh, uh, that I found that I was like, ooh, I want to, these are the slightly harder ones. I want to make sure that we can still apply all of our rules uh, to these types of problems. So I've got 7, 8, and 9 here. Go ahead and pause the videos, work these out. Again, use that multiple power rule and uh, make sure to apply the other rules of the exponents as well. Okay, good luck. Okay, let's take a look here. Number seven, so again, you apply the power to everything inside the parentheses. So we've got to apply it to all of these things. So we've got negative two cubed, we've got a squared cubed, we've got b to the, oh, I apologize, we've got b to the negative three cubed. We need to cube everything. Now remember, negative two, it's the negative being cubed here. So negative two times negative two times negative two, because there's three negatives, that comes out to be negative eight. a squared cubed, we multiply the powers and get a to the sixth. b to the negative three times three is b to the ninth, uh, actually negative nine. And then the last step here then would be to bring down that negative power. Remember, you can't have negative powers. So our final answer would be negative eight, a to the sixth, all over b to the ninth. Okay, that's the first one. Next one, we're gonna cube everything inside. So first of all, five cubed. And then we gotta cube everything underneath here. So we've got x to the negative two cubed. Well, five cubed, you can use your calculator for that. Five times five times five gets you 125. All over, and we're gonna have to multiply the powers here because it's a power raised to a power. Gets us x to the negative six. Now we're not gonna say that's our final answer because we have a negative exponents. We need to go ahead and pull up those x to the negative six. They become positive, and our final answer is 125 x to the sixth. Okay, sweet. Last step here. Uh, we're gonna, or last one, number nine. We need to raise everything here to the negative two power. So we're gonna get three to the negative two power, 
x squared to the negative 2 power and b to the negative 5 raised to the negative 2 power. Okay, 3 to the negative 2 power. Well, that comes out to be, now remember, negative rules. That's going to come out to be, in fact, we've got it right here, if you remember, um, in our table. 3 to the negative 2 power is elevator rule. Um, it comes out to be 1 ninth. Here we get x squared raised to the negative 2. Well, that's x to the negative 4. Here we get b to the 10th. So the last step is to move these x's downstairs. Um, the b to the 10th stays on top, so we'll go ahead and put b to the 10th there. The 9 is already down, and those x to the 4th go down as well. So that is how you do those three problems with the multiple power rule. Okay, let's move on to the last part of this section. So we want to take the, the next couple minutes and talk about big, really big, and really small numbers. Because it's kind of annoying to write out a really big number. Um, but, but before we think of that, I'm, I'm interested. What's the largest number you can name? Not write out! Now, of course, we can... I mean, I'm sure all of you can, can sit here and say, Oh, the largest number I know is one zero 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 but what about naming? What about the largest n one you can name? So, so you know, uh, thousands, you know, millions. I don't know what, what, what's, what's the highest you can go that you can name. Go ahead and pause the video really quick and just think about it. Um, you can even write it down in your notebook because I'm, I'm curious what the largest number is you can name. Okay, so what did you say? I know most of you. Well, everybody can probably get million, and hopefully you can get billion. Most people can go even to the next one. Trillion. But what's after that? Um, it's kind of interesting. In fact, I'm, I'm really surprised. Everybody knows trillion. And uh, if I said, okay, why do you know that, tr what's, why do you know that trillion is the large, why is that your largest number that you know named? And everybody will probably all report the same reason, which is kind of sad. And that is because of this right here. Boom! This is the national debt clock. I'm not sure if you've seen this before, but uh, you can just Google uh, uh, national debt clock, and uh, you can come up with that the, the country's oh, $16 trillion in debt, uh, almost $17 trillion in debt. And that's, that's kind of sad that that's the reason why we know that the largest number is a trillion. Um, <laughs> but that's, well, that's the way it is. Now, some of you may have even got a, a bigger number. I'm, I'm curious. Uh, some of you may have even been able to come up with something bigger. I, in fact, I just said that word. The word Google is a uh, number that's actually bigger than a trillion. Uh, the, the, the next normal sequence after a trillion is quadrillion, if you wanted to know. And then it just keeps going on afterwards. But Google, or, or some of you may have even written a Googleplex. Ooh, those are really, really big numbers. Well, now that we've talked about some big numbers, we need to talk about how to do math with big numbers. There's an easy way to write some big numbers, and we want to talk about scientific notation. That's the shortcut for writing really big or really small numbers. Let's talk about it. So scientific notation is the use of powers of 10 to write numbers smaller, uh, make them a little more compact. So for example, here we have the number uh, 65 million. Well, 65 million, uh, here's the decimal place. You can move the decimal place over uh, exactly seven spots. And if you move it over seven spots, then that'll put it between the first and second number. When writing scientific notation, you always move the decimal, always move decimal between the first and second number, between first and second number. You didn't count the spots that you moved the decimal place over, and that's the power of 10 you use. So we moved the decimal place over seven spots, and so we would finally say, um, count the spot, count the decimal movement, decimal movement. So uh, because we moved it seven spots uh, to the left, we would write that the answer is 6.5 times 10 to the seventh. Um, and this is just a shortcut way of writing really big words, uh, really big numbers, a shorter way. Uh, let me write up one more just for fun. Uh, let's go with 7, 2, 4, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Woo! That's a lot. Now, this is a big number. We don't want to write it. In fact, we'd probably have a trouble naming this number because it's really 
big. Let's see, this would be thousands, millions, billions, 72 trillion, 400 billion. Now, if we wanted a shortcut, uh, right now the decimal place is here, we would move it over. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 spots. So it would be 7.24 times 10 to the 13th. So that's a really, really big number. Now we can do the, the, exa the exact same thing, but with really small numbers as well if we want to. For example, if I had the number 0 0.00000000036, this is a really, really small number. And scientific notation can be used to write uh, really small numbers as well. You do the exact same thing. You move the decimal place over uh, in between the first and second numbers. So we need to move it all the way to this location right here. So we move it over, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 spots. So I would write 3.6 times 10, and we moved it 9 spots over, so we put 9. However, this is a small number, and so to denote this being a small number, we use a negative. 3.6 times 10 to the negative 9th power. Okay, good. Let's have you guys try some. Okay, well, here are three problems for you to try. First of all, we'd like you to convert the, the national debt. Yeah, there it is, $16.7 trillion. That's when I recorded this video, of course. Um, we want you to convert that to scientific notation. Then go ahead and convert the population of the United States. Um, that's 320 million to scientific notation. And then on number three, uh, that's the length of an atom in inches, 0 .000039. Uh, we'd like you to convert that number also to scientific notation. Go ahead and pause the video, do that in your video notebook, and we'll check your answers. Okay, here we go. So you should have moved the decimal place over 3, 6, 9, 12, 13 spots and wrote 1.67 times 10 to the 13th power. Here, you're going to, the decimal place is right here. We're going to move it over 3, 6, 7, 8, 3.2 to the 8th power, times 10 to the 8th power. Good. This one you move over, let's see, 3, 6, 9, 10, 11. So you get 3.9 times 10 to the negative 11th. Make sure you put negative on there. Negative means small number. Okay, so what if we wanted to do some math in scientific notation? Um, how do you do it? Um, these are really big numbers, and so uh, it, it can be nice if you uh, convert it to scientific notation first, and then do the math. So let's uh, demonstrate this really quick. So I've got the national debt here. If we divide the national debt by the total number of people, well, that would that would figure that would help us figure out how much you and I and every single person in the United States owes if we wanted to pay off the national debt. To do that, we would have to do 1.67 times 10 to the third power divided by 3.2 times 10 to the eighth power. Sorry, this is 13th. Um, so how do we go about doing that? Uh, I'm going to show you a, a couple ways. You can do this by hand. For example, if you had 8 times 10 to the 5th power and you divided it by 2 times 10 to the 3rd power, basically you just do the normal operation. We would do 8 divided by 2, which comes out to be 4, and then do 10 to the 5th divided by 10 cubed. Now that's a power. When we divide powers, what do you do with the exponents? Oh, I hope you said subtract. That would be right. You would have 10 times, uh, 4 times 10 to the 5 minus 3, which is 2. Um, we could do that here with this problem as well, but what I want to do is show you how to do it on the calculator. Because these are big numbers, calculators work really well. I'm going to go ahead and bring up my calculator. You're going to need to find the, the power button, though. Um, for On a Casio, it's this EXP button. On other calculators, on other calculators, it's this EE -E button. That would be if you had like a Texas Instruments. Uh, they have this EE, -E, or some of them have like a 10 to the X or 10 to the Y button um, as well. You're going to want to find that uh, and make sure you can do this. Here, let's test it out really quick to make sure that we can do this one right since we did it by hand. It would be 8 times 10 to the fifth power. That means 8 times 10 to the fifth power divided by 2 times 10 to the third power. And the answer is 400, which is 4 times 2 
squared. Sweet. Um, so let's see if you can find your calculator. Find your calculator really quick and make sure that you can find the scientific notation button and calculate how much this one right here, we want you to calculate how much each person in the United States owes uh, if we wanted to pay off the national debt tomorrow or today, if we want to pay it off, how much does everybody have to come up with? Go ahead and pause your video and use your calculator to calculate this out and uh, push the play button to check your answer. Here we go. 1.67. I push the E button times 10 to the 13th. Divide it by 3.2 times 10 to the 8th. Push the Enter button. And we find out that each one of us, if we wanted to pay off the national debt, every baby, man, woman, child, old person would have to come up with about $52,187.50. Don't forget the cents. That's important. Okay, well, that is the assignment. Uh, that is the lesson for the day. We talked about big numbers and little numbers. Um, again, if you wanted to type in a, a really small number, you can use EE, and then you would type negative 3 power. That's how you get... Uh, scientific notation with negatives. Okay, go ahead and uh, move on to uh, the lesson. Uh, feel free to use your calculator when doing scientific notation. A little easier to do than, than doing by hand, but you can do it as well by hand if you wish. Um, if you need help, don't forget to stop by the Tutor Center or uh, contact your teacher. Have a great day.